Full disclaimer, this caffeine strategy is not for everybody. Just because the literature supports something doesn't mean that everyone should go out and do it. However, from a fat loss perspective, I found this very, very interesting. So we're going to unpack this literature, unpack this study, also going to give some potential strategies, give you what I've done, also give you some other ways to maybe combat the negative aspects of it, but most importantly, this channel's about the why. So we're gonna understand why this is happening, why there's this increase in fat loss with this kind of caffeine strategy. So let's go ahead and understand what this paper was talking about first and then get into the nitty gritty. After today's video, a big thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic. I put that link down below. That is a 25% off discount link for their Symbiotic. So it is a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. So that means that you're getting a multi-stage delivery. So there's a capsule inside of a capsule. So probiotics are interesting, but seed takes it to another dimension with this. So you get multi-stage. So you get the first capsule sort of dissolves and then the next capsule goes into its next stage where it breaks down. So you're getting potential colonization in the right areas of the digestive system. That's for the proper colonization of the bacteria so that it can do its job. There's a lot of evidence on probiotics, but most of them are denatured and broken down by the time they get into our hostile gut biome anyway, our hydrochloric acid and whatnot. So seed is very interesting with that. So if you're looking to improve your gut health, if you're looking to make some changes to your diet and you're just overall trying to change your, well, microbiome, then you wanna check them out. And that is an exclusive 25% off discount link. And that is specifically for people that watch my channel. So that's in the top line of the description underneath this video and a big thank you to them for the continued support on this channel over the years. International Society of Sports Nutrition. This is a study that is for some reason just not talked about that much. What they did is they took subjects and they gave them three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. Now that's a decent amount, right? Like, I would be, that would be consuming like 280 or so milligrams of caffeine for me. So that's a good amount, right? Now they had them consume this at either 8 a.m. or 5 p.m. versus placebo. And what they found was very interesting. At 8 a.m., there was a 10.7% increase in maximum fat oxidation after caffeine consumption, which means that subjects that had the caffeine in the morning can, ended up burning about 10.7% more fat. They oxidized more fat. They measured VO2 max and maximal fat oxidation. Here's where it gets really wild. The 5 p.m. group, get this, same amount of caffeine, had a 29% increase in maximum fat oxidation. So there was almost a 3x increase in fat burning by having the caffeine at 5 p.m. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I thought it too. Why on earth would I have caffeine that close to bed? There are people that can tolerate it, absolutely. Maybe you're one of them, but you know those people that can like have a coffee at night and like an espresso after dinner and go to bed. Those people exist, and that's a particular genotype that can deal with that. Most people don't wanna have caffeine at 5 p.m. So before we can kind of get into how you would do this, we also need to look at another thing. This study did not measure like a midday caffeine dose. Now, the theory behind, or at least my theory behind why this is working the way that it's working is because when you're talking uh, a 5 p.m. dose of caffeine, your cortisol levels are a little bit lower, a lot lower. Cortisol is high in the morning. That's normal. It's a normal cortisol rise in the morning. When you have caffeine, you are increasing cortisol a bit more. Okay, so you're increasing that cortisol spike and cortisol is not bad. Cortisol actually is going to increase the activity of hormone sensitive lipase. You're going to oxidize more fat. You're going to liberate more fat when cortisol, you burn more fat in the morning anyway. So what's happening potentially is the delta between our baseline without caffeine and with caffeine is bigger in the evening. Let's just say this number makes no sense. It's just a random number to illustrate a point. Let's say you consume, or let's say you have a baseline of cortisol at 10 in the morning, and then you have caffeine and that puts you at a 15, okay? 
Now let's say in the evening you have a baseline cortisol of five and you have caffeine and that puts you at a 15. The net difference is significant, but your overall fat burning or your overall cortisol is still the same as it was in the morning. You're just doing it at a time when it normally wouldn't be as high. So if you do work out in the afternoon, I don't particularly think that you're getting more fat burning in the afternoon. You're just getting more fat burning than maybe you ordinarily would, right? Because what happens is you have food that comes into your system throughout the day. All these things change to where fat oxidation would go down in the evening. Fat oxidation is typically higher in the morning. So the caffeine is just providing less of an increase. That being said, there could be diurnal cues in play. Right, so it could be the fact that because this is such a change to the system, that the body's like, oh yeah, cool, we're gonna burn more fat. Perhaps a midday dose would be interesting because the evidence does suggest that about six hours is where we really notice sleep differences with caffeine. So caffeine ingested six hours before bed, noticeable changes in sleep onset and total sleep time. So six hours is your bare minimum that you would want to avoid caffeine before bed. So let's say you wanted to have caffeine at noon or 1 p.m. prior to a workout. This hasn't been measured, but we could almost theorize that if it's going to be 10% increase in the morning, 30% increase at 5 p.m., maybe it's a 20% increase at 12 or 1 p.m. And that might be a good time to squeak a little bit more fatty acid oxidation. This is why, because this isn't small data, this is big data. Like, and the fat oxidation with caffeine, that's very well documented. Caffeine is a good fat burner. So how do we balance this? There's a couple of things. Okay, here's what I've done. Caffeine tolerance builds after about three days, okay? So what you will notice is that if you started having caffeine at 12 or 1 p.m., after about three days, you feel like you'd start needing it at that time. And that's where we're gonna start running into a problem. What I would recommend that you do is dose your caffeine in a midday fashion prior to activity or a workout one or two days per week and never back-to-back -back days, okay? You could theoretically consume caffeine in the morning like every other day and not build as much of a tolerance as if you consumed it every day. As a matter of fact, there's evidence to suggest that all you need is three to five days of without caffeine to be able to sort of reset that tolerance and eliminate the withdrawals. So that's what I would suggest there. The downside to that is when you have caffeine sparingly, it's going to have a higher effect, right? So if you had caffeine at noon, one day a week, that one day, you're probably going to have extra energy in the afternoon and possibly a harder time falling asleep. So what I've done with this, I've messed around and I've said, okay, I'm gonna try a midday workout, maybe a lunchtime workout, and that's gonna be my more fat focused workout, fat burning focused workout. So it might be more lower intensity, maybe go for a walk or a slow jog. I don't like training midday, but hey, if it makes, keeps me leaner and it works, I always wanna try this stuff out. I will combine my coffee with what's called apigenin. Apigenin blocks the calcium ions, the calcium influx into the cell, which does not inhibit the fat loss effects of caffeine to any measurable degree, but it does reduce some of the physical sort of uh, energy that comes with it. So you may not get the pre-workout type boost that you're looking for with caffeine, but you're still gonna get some of the fatty acid oxidation because you still have what's called cyclic adenosine monophosphate. You still have this whole increase that's happening there. You're just changing some of the calcium influx, which creates what's called an excitatory response. That's what makes you shaky. That's what might make you restless. So by doing this, we potentially increase our fat loss by, I'm gonna, I can guess by double, right? But that doesn't mean that you're gonna lose twice as much weight. It just means you're increasing fat oxidation a bit more. So your obligation to yourself is, okay, I'm not gonna go do anaerobic type work. I'm gonna consume this coffee and go for a walk or a slow jog or something like that. It's worth trying out because the evidence is quite strong. I mean, again, we know that coffee has fat loss effects, but the one thing we don't wanna do is mess up our sleep. So play around with apigen and play around with some of these other compounds that can help kind of negate some of the effects of caffeine. So theanine, apigen, and there's a number of other ones. I've done other videos on that as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.